haven't. It hardly isn't. And that's because you know how to drive. You actually drive. You're not sightseeing. You're not playing. And you're not worried about when you get to the truck shop, what Wi-Fi service to use. People ask that. You know, what's good for you? I said, why don't you go in and talk to a driver? Talk to an older driver. Don't pay attention to your games, video games. Talk to people who's been out here a while. Understand what it's really like. You know, GPS. God, I see GPS is... Read a road atlas. You need to read that. It, it won't let you down. That GPS will. Yeah, but it, it's, that's just kind of how... I'm, I guess I'm still old school. I understand new stuff. You know, but still, it just... To me, old school really is a lot better. People were better. Drivers were better. Everybody helped one another. You know, the old timers, they kind of, you know, grouchy, but you know what? You learn a lot from them. Learn a lot from them. Stuff that no driving school could ever teach you. Exactly. So, so after, so, you know, that's, that's doing the part of, of picking them up. But after Mm -hmm. you, after you drop them, you know, after you drop the load, uh, I I talked to the one cattle hauler and he says cleaning up after them is, is, especially in the, especially in the summertime. It is. So do you guys take them, do, do you guys clean it out yourself or do you guys, or do you guys take them to, uh, you know, like to the Blue Beacon and, and have them to do it? Uh, Blue Beacon wouldn't wash the inside. There's places that are trailer washouts for cattle. They do it. Um, like at our pens, sometimes, you know, we had guys that worked there at the pens. Sometimes I've washed my own trailer out. I mean, I'm not too good to do that. I've done it a few times. If they were real busy, then, you know, and I needed to get going again, I'd do it myself. Or sometimes if I was just bored and needed the exercise because I gained five pounds that week. It just, it, that's just the way kind of is. But most of the time you have, they wash out. They have trailer washouts that are for that reason. A blue beacon don't do that. So what's the, what, what, what's the average that a cattle hauler could make? And most of the time, I got a percentage of the load. When I first started, of course, I was on a low. You know, I, was, I had to go places that, God, I just didn't want to go. Um, I earned my way out of that. You know, the more I drove a then I could kind of pick and choose where I wanted, and I chose to stay in the South. Um, I remember that uh, 2007, I had I had to leave. And I can't remember. I'm thinking I made 28% of the load. Is it 28 or 31%? I can't remember. I think it was 28, and then I got 31% of the load, and then two weeks later, I had to leave. So, I mean, it made, I made pretty good. I made really good money, very good money. Okay, okay, that's what's up. All right, so so twenty, so Chris, twenty years in the game as a as a female cattle hauler. Um, what was it? What was it like uh, coming up? You, you know, coming up through the years. Um, did you did you start in the school, or did you, or was you grandfathered in? Uh, when I, when I started driving, I didn't have a license. I had a permit. And then I, I finally went and got my license after I dumped him off in California. Then I went ahead and I actually got CDL then. But I had already been driving for about five years without it. I got lucky, so lucky. It wasn't as strict then either. Um, it started getting strict. It, it just, I can't really, I can't really you know, think about how hard it was to get my license because I'd been driving. I had no problem. You know, um, I was kind of nervous when I had to take a test, you know, and then backing and all that. I could actually <laughs> parallel park better than I could straight back up, mm-hmm. you know. But how hard as I can do that synchronized backing when you got three shoots and then one's pulling forward, backward, kind of cool. Because you got a little little small area you got to hit. It's got to be perfect and flush. Uh, getting my license, I don't remember. I don't remember it being real hard taking my test except for one part. When I went under an old pass, got about two miles away, she said, uh, oh, gosh, she asked, what was the height on that? I said, what do you mean? Said, well, how, how tall was that? I didn't know. After that, I never missed a sign. I didn't fail. She just told me I needed to be, pay attention, and I've never failed it. 
since I've always paid attention to every little sign everywhere, everywhere. That's imp- I mean, that's important. That's part of what I got to do. Just when it says no trucks allowed and you're going, okay, <sighs> she load out pens are down there and these cattle got, you know, you're going, oh well. So sometimes you go places and this has happened once in Mississippi, four of us went to this place. I gave us directions. He gave us directions to a curvy dirt road that had trees that were hanging over. You know, we had all those lights and stuff. We were like, okay, stop. We got to stop. We stopped partway through. Ended up having a back out of the back. That was fun. That, that farm, oh, I'm, I'm real sorry. I didn't think about these trucks being so big coming through here. Dude, come on. But it, it's all right. And then, of course, when they see me, they're thinking, huh, I'd be pulled over several times. They wanted to know if I got anybody with me. And I said, no. They would look in the truck to see if I had somebody else with me. You're driving this by yourself? I said, no, I'm an invisible person. Yes, I'm driving this by myself. And yes, was that mouthy? I was very mouthy to DOT a lot. So, Chris. I lost my license because of speeding, too. So, Chris, throughout throughout your, uh, throughout your you know, two decades of, of driving, have you ever been, uh, have you ever, you know, been in an accident or have you seen an accident that that kind of made you think that this was the wrong industry to get into? I've seen some really bad, bad accidents. And I always said to myself, if I was ever in an accident, whether it was my fault or not, and somebody died in that accident, I would stop driving. And I've seen one in Springfield, Missouri, it was pretty bad. And then I also seen one in Arizona where a, a trailer it came off the truck and it landed on top of an RV that had four uh, older people in it. I mean, it flattened it. it was, I remember it being real windy and I remember seeing that. I'd been driving very long when I'd seen that. I've seen other accidents that are pretty bad. Of course, I don't stop and look, but I, I try not to think. But I also try to think about what happened to that accident to happen. Um, because I went to school for forensics. Now I said, well, yeah, I got that high dollar degree, go back, you know, be hauling cows, have a wreck, I can tell you how it happened. Now I make fun of that, but then I see wrecks, I think, God, that's just terrible, you know. I trained to be a medical legal death investigator, which investigates a lot of accidents that involve trucks. Mm-hmm. Trucks used to be the blame for everything, so they, uh, the gas cans would help a lot. The only accident I can, I, she I didn't think I'd ever been one. I forgot. Years ago, me and my ex, we had uh, trucks. We lived in Garden City. And we had trucks. And um, this one friend of mine, I'd known him for a long time. He went to, he went to work for us. We were in the city, Oklahoma City. We had to work, we were arguing over, we had the backbones in. We were arguing really bad. And I was funny paying attention. I had the guard shack pulling into the Petro. Nobody in it, I guess. James reminded me of that. He says, that's the only accident you ever had. I said, what I do? He said, you did it and kept going. I said, oh, hell. Nobody in it at that time. I am so thankful for that. He said, did I damage it a lot? He said, no, you just hit the corner of it, but you still hit it. I said, man, how did I forget that? He said, you were fighting with your boyfriend. Okay, that's what done it. Man. All right, uh, Chris. Uh, throughout your throughout your tenure, you know what what has what has been some of the stereotypes that you uh, that that you heard about women on the road? I was going to Tennessee one night on forty. It's going east. The girl had just come out of a driving school. Obviously, I mean, I got to a conversation. All these guys were asking her, you know, what she looked like, where she going, blah blah. And I was listening to her. And that is so dumb to sit there and do that. You, you don't know. And she was telling them where she was going to pull off for the night, and everybody wanted to buy her coffee and stuff like that. I got her to go to another channel. Of course, half the guys followed too. I said, girl, I want to tell you something. I said, I don't know you. You don't know me. But woman to woman, don't do that because you don't know what you're dealing with. I said, some of guys could rape you, kill you, whatever, but don't do that. Just don't do that. You need to be smart. She told me to go to hell. And then we go, don't listen to her. Blah, blah, blah. Well, about a month later, I had heard from somebody telling me about some new female truck driver in Tennessee who had got raped by two guys. I don't know if it was her. I don't know what was going on, but it made me think of that. Yeah, this is crazy. You just got to pay attention 
know where you are and what you're doing. What do you think about what, what do you think about these uh, female truckers uh, that's on social media doing doing stuff like that? One of the groups, and I mean, I'm not going to say which one it is. Uh, they was talking about, you know, uh, I think all drivers ought to do 55 or 60. I mean, they were just going, to, you know, two people go too fast. And thinking, and they're talking about how hard it is out here. Oh, yeah, it's hard out here. It's very hard. You know, if you want to be out here and accept what it's like out here. Some of these, you know, some of them, they just, they think it's all about glamour and all that. Okay, cool. Girl, you look good. She's only driving about 400 miles, you know, a day, sometimes in a week. Yeah, it's not, it's hard out here. It's very hard. And I understand that. When I started, women, they didn't have things for me, like showers. Showers were not designated for women. It, it just wasn't like that. It was hard back then, you know. Guys, they would, the old time, a lot of them would run down women. And I look at how she is. And old guys, they would get on me really hard. Um, there was times I'd just cry, I'd get so angry, and I liked what I did, but I also learned from them, and I'm glad they were hard on me. So I tried to kind of be a little rough for some of these women, oh, they, they just took that terrible, you know, you shouldn't be out here. Huh. Okay. No, and, and a lot of them don't last. They don't. It is too hard. It, there's nothing that's easy about it, and I hate it when they go to driving school. I will not say no more about that. Driving school, uh-uh. It just, you learn textbooks that to handle 80,000 plus pounds is a whole other story. A whole other story. Well, my trainer says, was your trainer asleep? No. My trainer sleeps one behind me all the time. Your trainer's not supposed to be asleep behind you. But I just, I get really angry because they, they want it to be easy and comforting to them. Not all of them. Don't get me wrong. There's just a few of them I've run across that are like that. You know, well, don't you run with your boyfriend or your husband or you know your dad? No, I can do this by myself. Can't you? I hate it when I say that, but it makes them think, and I think, why even do this? Well, you know, changing now. I have to admit, you know, the face of the face of trucking has has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially yeah. with the with the inclusion of uh, social media and the new social media right. app, TikTok and everything. The, 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 the back then criticism the, the, you know, there was more criticism from guys, from male truckers uh, back then. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's still a little bit, a uh, little bit of criticism from, you know, from male truckers. But now, you know, now with the modern age and with, uh, you know, with with uh, social media the way it is, it seems as though you females get more criticism from females than anybody. Is, would, that be, mm -hmm. would that be a fair assumption? Yeah, women, are just, yeah. women are like that. I mean, that they really are. But to me, women are just like that. A bunch of women are just like that. Um, I hate to, I mean, I really hate to say that I'm not. And, and I see something, if somebody's doing something different or wrong, or something's going to come back on, like I did with the one who was on there, mm -hmm. I had to explain to her roughly what she was doing. That's fine. I mean, and I was probably, I didn't threaten her, but I was up for, pretty hard on her. Oh, yeah. you know, sometimes it takes somebody to be hard. I think that, I think that because guys who taught me when I was first driving, they were hard on me, very hard on me. And some of them, you know, you got to handle them. The kids love some women. Other women, shoot, they're just as tough as I am. And I, I know some other female cow haulers, and they are tough. They're really tough. But it's the same thing. They like what they do. So at first, when I first started, I would get, oh my, I'd have an audience. And I'd load, unload anything. Um, and I'd have guys, you know, she ain't going to laugh. Uh, shoot, I outlast them. You know, some of the guys that are still, the old timers are still out there. They're still rough and crude. But I love those guys because I learned from them. And I wish that women, instead of cutting each other down, learn from one another. All right, all that right. Makes that makes plenty of sense. <laughs> that makes plenty of sense. I learned from one another. Oh, too, yeah, that was too quick. I meant to give you this one. <laughs> 
Hey. <laughs> so, Chris, man, uh, look, thank you very much. I, I, I definitely enjoy this conversation. And that's what we do over here on the Lockout Man podcast show. The best conversation starts over here, man. Um, before you uh, get up out of here, because I do appreciate, you know, you taking your time out to uh, share your story and, and, and your experience Bye. with us and everything. And I really do appreciate that. But, uh, the, you know, the, the, the life as a truck driver, um, as a truck driver, you know, we, you know, there's, there's different, uh, there's different type of, of drivers out here. We got the local drivers, we got the regional drivers, such as myself, we got, uh, you know, we got the over the road drivers and, you know, and, and drivers that, that drives all sorts of, of freight, cattle, drive-in, mm-hmm. flatbed, car yeah, hauling. I reefer, but I've even pulled, yeah, pulled reefer. Right, I pulled reefer, and it's a tank. Reefer, yeah. tankers. I've done a little bit of it all. You, but, you know, some some people take, some old school drivers and maybe some mid, you know, mid-tier drivers take offense to mm-hmm. some, you know, to some of the, uh, some of the more popular uh uh social media uh drivers you know drivers that probably haven't haven't like touched all 48 but you know but they you know they out here saying you know saying you know their experience and all like that but i do appreciate all of them i i see you know i see i, I see it all i i appreciate the the social media drivers i appreciate the old school drivers I appreciate the veterans. You know what I'm saying? Because all you guys got yeah, different I, type of stories. Right. If everybody's different out there. I mean, you guys know who's regional or just a local. Um, in the wintertime, we get real slow and kind of decide we can either work or not. And I decided to pull into for the winter. I liked it. It's pretty cool. You know, I've never done it, but I liked it. And we went back to Holland from February to December. February to December. It was back on Holland Cow's part again. And that was something I did. God, I'm home at 7 o'clock at night. I don't know what to do with myself. You know, you get used to that. And I can say the happiest I've ever been in my whole life is when I was honk cows. And I, I was single for 22 years doing it. Couldn't be in a relationship, or at least if he was. Had to be a city boy because they didn't know what my world was like. Being around guys all the time. I don't see it that way. And they didn't see me that way. I was their co-worker. And that's what I stayed at, you know. God, some of the remarks I would get, stupid. Now, I mean, I remember going on 40 West one night, and I could hear a bunch of drivers talking on the radio about some female cow hauler. And this one freight hauler claimed he took her out, and blah, blah, blah. And they was talking about me. I said, what the hell? Well, I got in this conversation with him a little bit behind him. I finally called up the side, and I said, you, and I said a whole bunch of words. I said, I would never go out with you or anybody like you. And then, one of the other drivers said, dude, you got busted because that is that girl. Oh, man. No, but they kind of, they quit doing that after a while. I mean, it, it was more accepting to see female drivers. That was a little different. And but when you're in that circle of drivers, they're used to seeing you. And they, and they treat you good. You got to be able to help one another. got to be able to trust one another. Now, I got to trust if I get in the bind, you're going to help me. Now, if I get pinned in the trailer, same way with, you know, with them. There's a lot of times that I'm on my own loading and unloading in the middle of the night. That's just something that goes with it. No big deal. So everybody thinks, oh, I wouldn't do that. Hey, you would if you wanted to be a cow hauler. Just do that. And like I said, the hours that we keep, it takes a special person to be able to do that. You know, and, and you can. You really can. And it's great. I love it. Didn't seem as not much, but, you know, I loved it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be any other way. And the drivers now... You know, they just, if they only knew what it was really like at one time. And I wonder if they'd be drivers. If it was still like that, if they'd be drivers now. I looked at some of these old trucks, I'm thinking, dang, I wouldn't have this truck across the country. So, cab over, oh my gosh. I just didn't see it. They did it. These guys did it. And they paved, those older guys paved the way for what everybody's doing right now. And yet, the new drivers and stuff, they don't give credit to the people who did make it possible for them. That's what gets me, is that they have no respect for that. 
and they need to have respect for them, and they need to have respect for their job and the job that they're doing. Exactly. And on that note, man, oh, man, Chris, uh, they they can learn. They can learn a lot. Uh, excuse me. They can learn a lot. Uh, they can learn a lot from you. So thank you very yeah. much for coming on to the show, man. Uh, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. I really do appreciate and it. And it be, uh, oh, go no ahead. Problem. I'm sorry. I was like, no problem. And I always said, you better be safe out there because you're driving in a region that's just too cold. This is way too cold up there. Uh-uh. <laughs> nah, I'm I, seen, I seen the other day. Um, I'm used to it. <laughs> I hate cold. <laughs> I I'm, I'm, I'm used to it. I'm yeah, used to I it. it. <laughs> I'm used to it. I born born and raised in the north uh in the uh in the Midwest. So I, I know about I know about uh four seasons in a day. I know all about that. Chris, thank you very much again for coming on. You are a I citizen. Second. So whenever you want to come on and chop it up again, do you can reach out to me and we'll <laughs> get it in. Okay. That'd be great. All right, I, safe out there. I will. I appreciate you. You take it easy, and I'll talk to you later. All right, bye-bye. Later. Later.